Hi guys, Jordan with Motion Array, and it's probably no surprise that I love Premiere Pro. But chances are, even if you use this program every single day, you still won't use every single effect that it has at its disposal. So today, I'm going to share with you four helpful effects that you probably didn't know Premiere had to offer. So let's start it out with number one, Basic 3D. Most people assume that any time you dip into the realm of 3D, you need to switch over to After Effects. Not necessarily true. Premiere actually contains its own unique effect called Basic 3D, which, as the name might explain, is a very simple tool to manipulate your particular video element to appear viewable in the X, Y, and Z axes. Search in your effects panel for the Basic 3D effect and drag and drop it onto your footage. Now you can manipulate and swivel and tilt your image to make it appear like it's actually a 3D object and not just a 2D projection. But let's take this a step further. You don't just have to keep these new 3D angles as they are, as that might not look the best for your particular project. But you can use them for a variety of other customized effects, like building a unique wall of multiple videos to play at once, or using it to create a customized transition. This works especially well for logos. A really simple way to pull it off is like this. Take your layer with the basic 3D effect, and for either the swivel or tilt, Start it at a perfect right angle, so that it actually mimics the thinness of a piece of paper and effectively disappears. Angles like 90 and 270 degrees are your sweet spots. Now you can keyframe the swivel or tilt so that it starts here, but then ends displayed for the viewer to see. You can even add a few extra rotations so that it doesn't just swivel, but it's like it's got momentum and fully rotates around a couple of times. Lastly, you can give it some additional realism by checking the box for specular light, which will project a fake light source over top of your clip and interact with it depending on its relative orientation. But you can probably see how this effect could be used to make some pretty interesting and professional looking animations without having to step inside of After Effects. Number two, ramp. Depending on the type of video content you wanna produce, there's a high chance that you're gonna come across this scenario that you'll wanna replicate. Plain text on a solid background. Now, if you haven't done a lot of design work, your instinct might be to create a solid color and to use that. And that's not a wrong decision. In fact, it's very commonly used. But you can add some subtle complexity to your backdrop by adding a ramp. On your solid background layer, add the ramp effect. And you can use a linear ramp if you'd like, but I'll prefer to use a radial ramp. And then I'll move the center of the circle to the center of the frame with the start of ramp values and then create a very soft fall off using the end of ramp values. Now, when you choose two colors that are very close, but not exactly the same, you can see that there's a subtle complexity that's added to your background. These subtle variations can give a sense of realism to your backdrop, making it feel a little bit more like real life and a little bit less like a cartoon. It's not extremely obvious at first, but when you toggle on and off the effect, you can see how it actually makes a subconscious difference to the look of your video. Number three, Turbulent Displace. If you've never used this effect before, you might have passed over it for two reasons. One, it sounds complicated to use. And two, it looks complicated to use. But here's the overall deal with this effect. It basically allows you to make controlled distortions to your footage. This can give it a wide array of possible uses, including everything from creating a trippy LSD type effect, all the way to a liquidy transition. Really, this effect is incredibly powerful and can come into use for a crazy amount of different project needs. But let me show you how to get that last example with the liquid text transition. Start by searching for your turbulent displace effect and then drag and drop it onto your text. Then make sure that all of your amounts are set to zero, amount, size, complexity, and evolution, and then keyframe them to start at this amount. Then drag those keyframes forward to the point in time where you want the effect to start transitioning out. Then take your playhead and move it forward to the place where you want your transition to be complete. Now, when you increase these different values that we've keyframed, the result is that they're gonna liquefy into the final position that you set them. It'll take some trial and error, but for the purposes of this tutorial, my final amounts were an amount of 212, a size of 100, a complexity of 3.2, and an evolution of 10.1. Now just keyframe the opacity to fade out slowly and the end result should look something like this. But it has additional practical uses as well. 
In one of our previous videos, we actually showed you how to use this turbulent displace effect to animate hand-drawn elements that you've scanned into Premiere. And I'll link to that video in the description below. You can make these elements jiggle and wiggle separately from the footage, and it gives a little bit of extra life to your elements. Number four, lens distortion. If you've ever worked with filming your own drone footage before, chances are you've experienced the tension between being excited about sweeping wide vista shots and with being frustrated by how it still retains that fisheye look. Most notably with the bending of the horizon to be absolutely not a straight line. But there's a really simple fix to this. There's actually a set of presets that I've used in the past which helps significantly. By going down to presets, lens distortion removal, you can actually remove the fisheye effect by finding which camera you use to film on and applying that preset to your footage. There is a selection of options that should help you to narrow down what will help your footage out the most. But even if your particular camera isn't on there, it's okay. Because even if you select somewhat of a similar option, you can make manual changes under effect controls. Here you can make changes to elements like the overall curvature in order to take complete control over the correction of your lens's look. Each of these presets have been tailored to work with a particular camera, but you can also start from complete scratch and just use the lens distortion effect, which all of these different presets are based off of. And guys, that's been four helpful effects that you might not have known were in Premiere Pro. I hope that at least one of these will be able to help you out in a future project. If you did find this tutorial helpful, then check out all of our others for After Effects, Premiere Pro, and filmmaking in general here at MotionArray.com. And for those of you here on YouTube, we're giving you 20% off your first month subscription at MotionArray.com. Check out the link in the description below to take advantage of this offer. Thank you so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.